Welcome back to the Core Cars News Tech Lab. Today we're diving into a Q&A, answering some of your questions from our community tab. Every week or so, I may miss some weeks, we answer the questions you leave over in our community tab over at youtube.com slash cordcuttersnews. You can find it in the community tab there. Just reply to the post asking for questions. If you're new here and you like what we do, we do Q&As every week about and daily core cutting news videos every Monday through Friday. Just hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, doing one or both lets YouTube know so they recommend our video to more people that you enjoy what we do here. All right, let's dive into it. Start off with, with the first question of the day. Luke, do you think that DirecTV will bring over Dish channels whenever the merger is complete? I'm currently a DirecTV stream customer and would like to know the answer. So let's kind of broaden this question a little bit because I'll answer that too. But what are we expecting to have happen once and if, though I do expect this to happen, DirecTV completes its purchase of Dish for $1. With this deal, DirecTV is buying Sling and Dish Network and will merge the two satellite companies making the largest provider of live TV service in the United States with roughly 20 million total subscribers. What do I think will happen? Well, First of all, I do think there will be some com uh, combination of channels, uh, though that may mean a price hike, it, though more likely it means new packages. So Dish has some channels that DirecTV has, DirecTV has some channels Dish does not have. Dish does not have Bally Sports RSNs, for example. DirecTV doesn't have some others that Dish has. For the foreseeable future, once the merger happens, I don't think there'll be any changes. If you're a Sling TV customer, for the, at least the next year, if not more, you're going to just be sling. Nothing's going to change. Same with DirecTV Stream or DirecTV customers. Nothing's going to change there. What I do suspect over time was we'll slowly see, like for example, new customers. Instead of being able to pick from Dish or DirecTV packages, you'll just get one set of packages. And then DirecTV will probably do their best to encourage customers to leave whichever packages they don't want and then merge over. I think we're years away from any packages shutting down. I think Sling and DirecTV Stream for the foreseeable future will remain their own thing. Now you'll probably get the option as a DirecTV Stream or DirecTV customer to pick whatever package you want. But what those packages will look like is all a guess game. I think this is very similar to Sirius XM merging, right? Sirius and XM merge to create Sirius XM because neither one could survive on their own. Slowly, um, those two um, services only offered one set of new packages for new customers, and then they slowly moved over old customers to new ones. And that's what I suspect will happen here. Which packages will, will happen, what these packages will look like, what they'll cost, your guess is as good as mine right now. But we'll wait and see. I do think that these um, two companies will merge. There's so much competition now in the world of streaming with high-speed internet from Amazon coming and SpaceX already available, 5G home internet, fiber, cable, and more coming to rural America. I think it will be something that we'll see become more common in the future that this competition is real and that will allow the DOJ and FCC to approve this merger. Though I do suspect that there will be some contingencies on this that they'll have to do certain things. What that is, I don't know. We'll see what the terms are they agree to to make the deal a reality. Uh, NYC asks, and thank you for being a sponsor, by the way. It's great to see you here. Long-term supporter of Core Cars News. What are your thoughts on Apple TV Plus being a part of Amazon Prime Video channels? Uh, so yeah, so this was announced last week or a few days ago, depending on when you watch this, that later this month, Apple TV Plus will be available for subscription through Amazon. I think this is kind of where subscriptions are going. You have a few brokers, Amazon Prime Video Channels, um, Roku and others where you can go and log in, manage multiple subscriptions through one. I use Paramount Plus through Amazon Prime channels because it's something I usually add for like a month and then drop, you know, binge watch the new Star um, Trek show, for example, or something. It's not something I'm willing to subscribe to all year. Apple TV is probably something that in my book would also be a subscribe for a month, then binge watch its content, unsubscribe. And because of that, we're seeing increased growth of people wanting to subscribe directly through things like um, Amazon Prime Video. I think this would be a great boon for Apple TV Plus because it makes it much easier for them to get their content through that. But I also think you know, the tough things are giving up some revenue through it. We'll see. Apple TV Plus has been struggling to get subscribers that are actually paying for it. They're giving it away so often for free to Apple customers. We'll see. But I think this is a good move. 
I suspect we'll see more and more streaming services become available through these, um, we'll call them brokers. And I think the brokers of either streaming to players or things like the Roku channel, um, Amazon Prime Video and others will be the place where you subscribe to your content rather than having three or four different services with three or four different logins going forward. Let me comment, do you use, you use something like Amazon Prime channels to subscribe to other streaming services? I love the ease of adding and dropping. That's why I do it. All right. Um, how would you convince somebody who only watches reruns and marathons on a live TV streaming service to ditch it and go to on-demand cheaper options? Well, that's a tough one because from the question, it sounds like it's a parent or an older relative that you're trying to convince to leave it. I know I, for example, have a almost 90 year old grandma who watches a lot of TV. I, you know what? She knows how to use cable. I'm not going to convince her um, to change it. So I just try to help her the best I can with her Comcast cable. But how can you convince somebody? My suggestion would be hook them up with a cheap Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV. I find for a lot of um, older clients I use, Roku is one of the simplest ones because you just get this easy to use user interface or a bunch of rows of content that confuses people and put in um, whatever service you think will give them what they want or maybe a Pluto TV or Tubi, wherever it may be you want to put on there. I deleted everything but what my grandma needed when Valley Sports was no longer available on Comcast and she had to get it through the Valley Sports app. And so I, there was, she opened her Roku and there was one icon, Valley Sports, so that was it basically. If you can pull that off, that's what would be my suggestion. Let them try it out, play around with it, use it. Unfortunately, um, for some people, they're very much locked in their ways, they're not willing to change, and you can't force people to change. It's their money, their decisions. But you know, if you wanna really try to help them save some money, maybe for Christmas, give them a, you know, a cheap Roku um, for it so that they can try it out and see maybe, hey, yeah, this really is all I want and all I need. Some people are really, they love the idea, of, even though they 90% watch um, reruns, that occasionally there's other stuff they wanna watch and they're not willing to give up their subscription for that right now. Leave a comment, let me know if you have any suggestions on how to convince somebody like that to ditch it. All right, here's the next question up. Why isn't new episodes of syndicated programs like Jeopardy, Wheel, Fortune, Family Feud, People's Court, and more available on demand on a streaming platform? Some of them are in different places. Of course, you can get a live TV service and DVR them, but it's a rights issue. These, these type of shows rely on syndication rights. They sell off to different ones. That's why sometimes you see you know, People's Court on Fox in one market, but on a totally different channel in another market. Um, Wheel of Fortune and um, Jeopardy in my market air on a CBS station, even though they're widely you know, on ABC in a lot of places, for example. It really varies widely depending on where you live and what it does. So they're very hesitant to give that up. That's how they make a majority of their money. And, and a lot of times I think they're worried that if they would make their entire new catalog of new stuff available on something like Peacock or Disney Plus or others, it would lower the value to, to cable or local affiliate stations, I should say, and they would stop paying as much. Now, older content has been made available at different times through different ones. Um, for example, you can um, catch Jeopardy and different things and some different free ad supported streaming services. It varies widely what's available there, how much, uh, usually very old content like the Bob Barker, your Price is Right content, but it is out there. Why is it not more widely available? Because still the majority of where they make their money is through um, cable networks, or I should say local TV stations paying them. They don't want to do anything to upset that gravy train. All right, let's keep moving along. Um, this one, I, I can't really answer, but it's an interesting question. Uh, the original 19, Ninja Turtles um, movie recently left Paramount Plus, so you know where it's going. I don't know where it's going, but yeah, we're seeing a growing amount of older content rotating off of services like Paramount Plus, Peacock, and others, and basically being put up for sale to the highest bidder to different streaming services. This comes as Paramount's trying to raise some money and sometimes taking even their very well-loved content like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, putting up for bids, and who knows? It may appear on Netflix, it may appear on Hulu, it may appear on Amazon Prime Video, I don't know. But to get the money, 
that the maximum amount of money, they decided it's kind of best to take it off their own streaming service, sell it out to other people to get some revenue through things like um, uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime versus having you subscribe to it through there. Let me know. What do you think of that? Does it surprise you at all? Leave me a comment. All right, last question up. Do you have any update on 5G TV broadcasts? So 5G broadcast of TV is the idea of, you know, we have over the air signals right now. They grab your antenna. I get over 50 channels where I live with my antenna. So where does that go? You know, what's the next version of that? Well, some TV stations have been testing out 5G, TV over 5G. It's a data signal over 5G. You connect that, pick it up with an antenna and watch it on your television. It's in testing. For now, the industry seems to be really focused on ATSC 3.0. If that were to fail, and there's definitely a lot of very unhappy people with it, though I know I think a lot of the rumors of people walking away and shutting down their um, ATSC 3.0 transmitters is overblown, but there is a lot of lawsuits about patent issues with this. If this would become financially unfeasible, I think 5G over the air television is the next thing that will happen. It's being tested, but will it become a reality? We'll have to wait and see. Yes, it's being tested. Yes, there are some markets where that's happening in a limited testing way, but widespread commercial use of it for now is a thing of the past. We'll keep a close eye on this, but it could be interesting to see over there TV being broadcast on basically 5G signals. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Check back next week. Leave me a comment. I'd love to know, do you enjoy these Q&As? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll talk to you all again real soon.